In today's video, we're going to be looking at the age-old question of why do my brakes feel spongy? So hydraulic brakes over time can lose a little bit of feel. Perhaps they feel a bit vague with the, with the bite point, perhaps they're losing a bit of power and not just feeling quite as they should do. So in today's video, we're going to look at all the reasons why this can happen and give you some solutions so you can stop your brakes feeling spongy. Now the classic problem you're going to get with mountain bike hydraulic disc brakes is air in the system. Now this can happen for a variety of reasons, we'll get to a bit later in the video, but to try and identify where your problem's coming from first, have a little system check. Now have a look around the lever, actuate your lever a few times and note what it's doing. Is it pulling all the way to the bars a few times perhaps and then it starts feeling quite good? If that's the case then you've probably got air in the system. If it's feeling a bit slow, then it could be air and system, but it also could be sticky pistons. Now, if we go down to the actual brake caliper, I've got a cutaway option here, so you can see what happens on the inside. You're essentially pushing the fluid from the lever down the hose or down the line into the actual caliper. And as you can see, there's little channels here. The fluid's forced through those channels and pushes the pistons, which in turn push the brake pads onto the rotor. Now, if those pistons themselves are a bit grubby, uh, this can happen for a variety of reasons, they won't retract properly, and that will be the cause. So let's jump into sticky pistons first, and then we'll deal with the brake lines and air in the system after that. Okay then, so let's assume in this case that you have sticky pistons on your brake. But how exactly did that happen? Well, there's two major reasons for this. And the first one, of course, is down to a bad bleed or some kind of air in the system, or perhaps not enough oil in the system, but we'll deal with that in the next part of the video. Let's talk about how the pistons themselves get sticky because of the fact they get dirty and grubby. Now, one of the reasons this will happen is your brake pads can get worn down, and to compensate for the brake pads getting worn down, the pistons push further out through the system. That's how your brake can uh, essentially feel the same. You'll take out the slack at the brake lever using either a dial or a, a free stroke screw if you've got Shimano levers, for example. And essentially your brakes will feel the same, but the pistons will be pushed further out to compensate. As a result, when you're braking, you can get dust from the brake pads, you can get mud, muck, any number of things, any sort of contaminants can get onto the actual surface of that piston. And then of course, as it's being used, it's pushing out and it's retracting slightly, taking the muck back into the system. So this is firstly a reason why you need to bleed your brakes from time to time, because the oil can get contaminated. And the second reason, of course, is the fact it's gonna slow down the use of those pistons, which means you get the sticky piston feel, your brake feels spongy and your brake feels horrible. There's one other factor with this. If your brake has four pistons, uh, that is also known as four pots, as opposed to two pots or two pistons, as you see on this brake here. See, this one has four pistons. The four piston ones tend to be a little bit more susceptible to this because of the fact that pistons themselves are actually that little bit smaller and of course more susceptible to the dirt affecting their actual action. Now what will tend to happen is perhaps just one of them gets a bit sticky, in which case the other one's pushing out more than the other and that will translate to a spongy feeling out of the brake levers. So how do you get around the sticky piston situation then? Well, quite simply put, you need to clean them. To clean your pistons, you're gonna need a few things. So first up, you need a plastic or a nylon tire lever. Don't under any circumstances use anything metallic for this. Definitely use something plastic so it can't damage the pistons. And then for cleaning it, a cotton bud is quite useful, although uh, you don't see them quite as much these days. So something small that you can get in there, a bit of rag, bit of shop towel, something like that. You might need something to rub it on the actual piston. Some isopropyl alcohol or a disc brake cleaner that's based on isopropyl alcohol and then the brake oil that's suitable for your brakes. So if you have a mineral oil brake, that could be Shimano, could be TRP, could be Magura, they operate on mineral oil, so you need mineral oil for this process. If you've got dot oil in your brakes, perhaps you've got a Hope brake or a SRAM brake, you're gonna need the relevant dot oil, the same oil that's in the brakes. That's absolutely crucial to this. If you use the wrong oil on the wrong brakes, it can damage the seals and you'll make things much, much worse. Now, before we do this, it's really important that you do understand something. Now, this is universal across all brakes that you're gonna be working on. When you look at the actual piston, there's only a certain amount that can actually protrude into the caliper before it pushes all the way out and then you might never get it back in properly, okay? So you need to understand how this process works. 
What we're gonna be doing is removing the pads from the system and basically pulling your brake lever so the actual pistons push all the way in. Now this is where you're gonna need an Allen key. For a SRAM system, a five mil tends to work. For a Shimano, a four millimeter, but you might have to experiment depending on your system, okay? And the idea is you have an Allen key that sits in the middle of these pistons and then you're gonna retract them and the pistons will grip against the Allen key. You might find that one of them is a bit slow in coming out. That will be your sticky culprit, the one that needs more attention than the rest. But persevere, keep pushing the lever until they push out. But just for example, this is a SRAM caliper that's a cutaway. Now, you can see the brake pads here and you can see the pistons behind. Now, if you look closely, you'll see the seal that runs around the piston. You don't want the edge of the, the actual piston to go past that seal or it can be nearly impossible to get them back in. It's really, really difficult, okay? So do take care when you're doing this. They only need to come out enough so you can actually clean the faces. Now this is where you're gonna need a cotton bud or something like that with some isopropyl alcohol on to spray and clean them. I mean, given the fact that disc brake cleaner is safe for use around brakes, you can actually just spray straight in and then use the, the cotton bud or something else. You might have to improvise, depending on what you have. An old toothbrush, perhaps, obviously not a filthy one that you've been using on your chain. It's got to be a clean one for, for using on here. And certainly don't go and brush your teeth afterwards because uh, you'll probably know about that. But anyway, back in there, get those pistons nice and clean. And what you want to do after you've cleaned them, is dip a cotton bud or something similar to that in the suitable oil. This is a Shimano brake, you can use mineral and so forth. Like I said, emphasizing the point, that is the crucial bit. Now use a bit of that oil and basically sort of smear it all around all of those pistons. And then you wanna reseat those pistons, okay? And you do this by using your tire lever. So a tire lever, this is why it's important to have a nylon or a plastic one, because the piston material differs on all brakes. Some of them are delicate ceramic materials, some of them are a nylon plasticky material, and if you score them or damage them in any kind of way, they're just not gonna work as they should do. So just be careful, use your common sense when you're pushing them back into place. And then of course, you're gonna to need to completely clean that caliper because you're gonna to wanna to put the brake pads back in and you don't wanna be putting brake pads in when they get risk of getting contaminated by the brake fluid that you've just cleaned those piston surfaces with. So just take a bit of care. It's kind of common sense at this point. Now, if they're not retracting back in, you're gonna to need to do this in combination with a bleed and ideally opening the top end of the system, which means at the lever end. And you might find as you go push them back in, some oil comes out of the lever end. So make sure you have some shop towel or a rag or something ready to catch that and it can't go near your front brake or any other parts of the bike there, especially if it's dot fluid, because that can actually take paint off. It's pretty nasty stuff. Once they're seated back in place, you're free to put the brake pads in and get the bike back running again. But you will definitely need to do a brake bleed of some kind, or at the very least, if you haven't opened a system, but the brake pads might be dragging at this point, you're gonna to need to compensate at the lever end by making adjustments for your bite point. Needless to say, you should be checking the brake pads as well, just for consistency. You wanna make sure there's enough material on them and pay attention to how the material's worn. If the material's worn low to one side and not on another, that's a culprit for you having a sticky piston because they've not actually been hitting the disc rotor straight or perhaps the, the actual caliper wasn't aligned correctly. So take this opportunity to have a good look at the pads. Don't let your bare hands touch the pad surface itself because you've got plenty of oils and stuff in your skin and they all add up to contamination. Make sure they're nice and clean. If you need to clean them, give them a good clean. Hot water is best. You can use disc brake cleaner on there, but make sure they're fully dry and evaporated before you use them again, because uh, that can affect their performance in the long term. Use some shop towel, fresh shop towel, to uh, just clean the surfaces of them and make sure you're good to go. If you need to fit new pads, uh, this, this part of the process, that's when you would do that. Okay, so, the other option then, of course, is air in the system. Now this can happen for a variety of different ways. Now the obvious one is it's had a poor bleed at some point, which means at some point during the brake's life, some air has got into the system during bleeding and there's an air bubble in there at some point in the system. The air bubble is a void, essentially, so that's compressible. Unlike the fluid, when you have to compress that, it just pushes it down the line. Air bubble translates as a spongy feeling at the brake lever, so that is not what you want. But you might also be wondering how air can get into the system in other ways, given the fact it's effectively a sealed system. Now this can be down to the type of brake fluid you've got in there, and on a very small level, and we're talking like a microscopic level here, that moisture, can, moisture and air can get into the system at any number of the joints, if there's a split in the hose, there's lots of different variants here. 
Now you need to understand a little bit about the two types of fluid that are in the brakes because these have different effects. You get mineral fluid and you get dot fluid. So I'm going to use SRAM and Shimano as an example here. SRAM uses dot fluid, Shimano uses mineral fluid. Now dot fluid you might have heard from cars, motorbikes, things like that. It stands for Department of Transportation and as such it is a regulated fluid. It has to adhere to very strict criteria for use. Mineral fluid doesn't. Now you might think, oh, it's not as good because of that. Well, actually, technically it could be better because of the fact that the designers of the brake system can design everything around their own fluid. So arguably that could be better. But both of them have different properties when it comes to moisture and air in the system. Dot fluid is hydroscopic, which means over time, on a tiny microscopic level, it ingests moisture into the fluid. This is the reason why you should have a small container of dot fluid and only use what you have. I.e. if you need to bleed your brake, open a fresh container, use that fluid. You may as well bleed all your brakes that you've got using that fluid because otherwise you're going to have to discard it because of the fact it will ingest moisture over time. Now, one of the results of this happening is the moisture over time will boil in your system because of the fact that any moisture will be water essentially getting into the system, boils at a much lower temperature than the brake oil. So when that happens, you get fluid vapor, which translates basically as an air pocket in the system, and ergo, you get your sponginess. When it comes to mineral oil, this is a bit different because it's hydrophobic, which means it repels the air. There's no way the air can get in the system. However, if moisture can get into the, into the brake lines for whatever method, the unfortunate thing that's also good about the fluid, being uh, hydrophobic, is the fact that the moisture then will sit probably at the caliper end, and the caliper is where the heat buildup happens first. And if this happens with your brakes that are using mineral fluid, then essentially that's going to boil extremely fast. It's going to lower the boiling temperature of your brakes dramatically because it's all going to be down at that caliper end, and then you can end up with a spongy feeling brakes. Either way, you're going to have to bleach your brakes because of the fact they've got air in them. So this is how you do it. So when it comes to removing the air from the system, you've pretty much got two options to do. And in most cases, it's option two. But the first option is some kind of a mini bleed. Now, if you've got Shimano brakes, the mini bleed is actually quite a good option. And when I say mini bleed, it means not bleeding the entire system. You're essentially just doing the lever end. Now you achieve this by leaving your wheels in place, whether it's the front or rear wheel and the brake pads and all that stuff. And you simply just open the lever end. So get the little bucket, screw it onto the brake lever itself so your, basically your system is open. Make sure there's some fluid in place, release that plunger, flick the lever a few times, maybe use a spanner just to tap the brake hose there. And if there's any air in there, that's when it's gonna start migrating out of the top. If it's still causing you a problem and you're reluctant to do a full bleed, something you can do, a little bit of a cheat, is getting the bike as near to vertical as possible. In fact, I've seen this done before when people hang their bikes up like vertically like I do here. Um, open the system up basically, leave the bucket in place, put the brake lever so it's like completely horizontal with the ground, give it a bit of a flick and then make sure there's some fluid in there and just leave it. Now this works sometimes if you have a problematic hose routing for your rear caliper for example, maybe it's got loads of kinks and stuff in it inside the frame and it can actually allow the air to just migrate out the top. Uh, I've even seen people do this overnight, although I've not actually tried something as excessive as that myself. Now you can achieve something similar with SRAM brakes, although it's a bit trickier and actually given how easy they are to bleed, you're probably better off bleeding the whole system. But you can achieve this with a SRAM brake. You can either just put a syringe in at the lever end and basically give it a bit of a pull push and give the levers a flick. Or you could put an open syringe in with some fluid in place there and treat it as a reservoir on the same basis as how the Shimano one works. Now, these, it's not quite as effective as it is with the Shimano system. It genuinely works really well with the Shimano one and it's actually one of the cool things about that system, but I've seen people get results with this. When it comes to bleeding the full systems, then we've got videos on those and there's gonna be links to them in the description underneath. Sometimes you can't beat just doing a fresh brake bleed. Fresh fluid, bleed the whole thing through, and hopefully that will be the end of your spongy feeling brakes. And finally, the last thing that can get air in your system is if you have a bad bleed kit. Now this is, uh, well, you actually need this of course to bleed your brakes, but make sure you've got one that properly fits and works with your system. Now there's lots of different options. There's the official ones, 
SRAM Shimano make their own unique kits for their systems, and honestly, you won't really beat those as such, but there are some great aftermarket ones. Part Tool make kits that suit SRAM, that suit Shimano, that suit all of the other brands on the market, thanks to a load of adapters, and they're really nicely made. But you don't have to spend all that money. There's other brands out there, for example, Epic Bleed Solutions. They offer budget offerings, which are great value, and they work, and they work really well. Whatever you use, though, Make sure you use it properly, make sure it's all put together properly, because at any stage, you can just be putting air straight into the system if you're using a poor set of syringes and a poor kit. It's down to you to make sure the equipment is right, and needless to say, make sure you're using the correct brake fluid. If it's mineral oil, you can get yourself a big workshop tub of the stuff, it's no problem, but make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, it's gotta be clean, fresh fluid. And if you're using DOT, again, use clean, fresh fluid. Uh, preferably one that hasn't been opened before. That's gonna have the best chance of your brakes staying consistent as long as possible. And really, that's all there is to it. Brakes are pretty simple. Some of them, admittedly, do take a bit more time to bleed than others. You've gotta be a bit more systematic with it, but as long as you follow the steps of the process, it's achievable to get your brakes feeling absolutely brilliant with no horrible spongy vagueness at the lever. Uh, hopefully this video has answered some questions for you. Uh, give us some feedback in the comments underneath. And uh, if you've got any ideas for another video of this style, please do let us know. Uh, we're happy to make them. Uh, see you in the next one. Ta-ra!